Greetings, sisters and brothers in Christ. This weekend we celebrate uh, the Feast of Epiphany and bring the season of Christmas to its end after the 12 days of Christmas. So we begin our worship in the name of God who created us, Jesus Christ who redeems us, and the Holy Spirit who comforts and sustains us. Amen. Now, Saturday, um, January 6th, this weekend, is uh, the Feast of Epiphany. And so the Gospel for the Epiphany Day is Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem asking, where is the child who has been born, king of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the Magi and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they, set, they left for their own country by another road. The Gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. And the title of our message for this day is simply Epiphany. And let us pray. And now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So sisters and brothers, um, as we begin this new year, we also uh, begin the season of Epiphany with January 6th, Epiphany Day. And I think it's beautiful that it coincides with the beginning of the new year. So the invitation for us today is to think about the Magi who visited the Christ child as models or examples for us today. And what can we learn from these magi for the journeys of our own lives? So that's what we'll be looking at today, okay? So just as sort of a way of introduction, the word epiphany itself, what does it mean? The New Testament, of course, was written in Greek. And in Greek, the word, there's a verb, epiphaneo, epiphany, right? which means to manifest something, to show forth, epi, forth, and phaneo, show, to show forth, to reveal something. Um, and I personally, who love 
like words and where they come from. I think it's exciting that the word epiphany has come into common usage today where many people say, oh, I, I had an epiphany, meaning like a, a profound insight, you know, that might lead us uh, uh, on a new path in our lives. So are you ready to begin our epiphany journey and to see what God might be revealing to you at this time of epiphany? Okay, so there are seven points. Um, seven's the biblical number of fullness, wholeness, completion. I always try to have seven points to my messages. So there's seven uh, ways in which the Magi can be models or examples for us. The first, number one, they um, are on a journey, okay? This idea of life, the Christian life, as a pilgrimage, as a journey, as a spiritual adventure is a very old, um, it's part of our Christian history, okay? So today, as we enter this season of Epiphany and as we begin this new year, can you look at your life and the things you're going through right now as a journey? as a journey ever more deeply into God, into God's presence in your life, as truly a spiritual adventure. That's how the Magi looked at things, okay? So that's number one. Can we follow their example? I also want to mention, I use the word Magi. Sometimes they're called the kings, the three kings, one, they weren't necessarily kings. Two, <laughs> there were many more than three, which we'll get to. Um, but in the Greek text, the word magi is used. And most Bible scholars think that it was referring to the spiritual leaders of the region which was to the east, which today is Iran, but in ancient times was Babylon or Babylonia and then became Persia. And the spiritual leaders of Zoroastrianism, which was the religion of that region, are called Magi. And in fact, um, they were like sort of scientists, astronomers, spiritual leaders, and they could be female as well as male, which I find very interesting. So that's really what the derivation of the word magi is from, and that's the word used in the Greek New Testament, okay? So, they started out on a journey. Second point, what, what was the impetus for their journey? What made them head out on this journey? Well, for them, it was they had studied the Hebrew scriptures, the Old Testament, and it spoke about this coming of the Messiah. In Hebrew, the word Messiah. In Greek, the word, that same word is Christos, the Christ. And um, so they'd studied the scriptures. The invitation for us, if we were to model uh, the Magi and follow their example, is for us also to search the scriptures, to, to look for the wisdom of our our scriptures of the Bible to guide our lives, okay? And um, when the Jews in 586 BC, when the southern kingdom of Judah was conquered by the Babylonians and the priests and the leaders were taken into exile in Babylon, that's, Bible scholars believe, when they actually, the priests, the Hebrew priests, wrote down the sacred text that today we know as the Old Testament. So there in Babylon, the, the Zoroastrian Babylonians would have had access to the Hebrew scriptures and, and be able to study them to learn about this coming Messiah, okay? But they also studied astronomy. They knew the heavens. They knew there was something going on 
um, this star that is spoken of and, you know, what is that star? Uh, we're going to get to that in our third point. So today, one, can you follow the journey? Um, two, can you let perhaps the impetus for the journey come to you through the guidance of scripture, of God's word, and what it might be inviting you to in this new year? And third, the Magi followed this star of Bethlehem. And for us today to look to them as an example, what are we following on our journey of life? What is it that we're following? What's leading us? So for them, we speak of the star of Bethlehem and there's um, three different theories as to what it could have been um, astronomically, okay? And one is um, an appearance of Halley's Comet, which was close to the time of Christ's birth. The, the appearance of a comet always signified the birth of a great person. Two, it may have been the conjunction of actually three planets, which also appeared close to the time of the birth of Christ. And third, um, it could have been a supernova, which is the, the death of a very old star. And in its death, it explodes and gives birth to many new stars. I love that image, okay? So um, we don't know the exact year of the birth of Christ. We have a small window and these different um, events were happening astronomically near the time of the birth of Christ. We're not sure which one um, the, these magi were, uh, ha were really following. But in an ancient manuscript called the Revelation of the Magi, um, it, it was circulating the first few centuries and it has some artwork. Um, and uh, it has pictures of stars and in one star is a, a manger with an infant in it. So Christ, the baby Jesus in the star. And in another um, picture, uh, artwork, piece of artwork, it has a star with a man carrying a cross in the star. So in both of these pieces of art, it shows us that in early Christianity, Christ himself was seen as the star of Bethlehem. Christ, the light of the world, as our morning star as our light that we follow on our journeys. So as much as I'm enthralled with astronomy and the different, you know, things that this star of Bethlehem could have signified astronomically, for my life, I'm. it's more important for me, and I hope you feel invited to follow Christ as your morning star as uh, the, the light that lightens the path of your life, okay? So that's the third point. Fourth point, Herod. I don't know how much you know about King Herod, but he was psychotic um, and uh, half Jewish. So the king of the region of Judah, um, but was very, very uh, afraid of any possible threat to his throne, so had many beloved members of his own family killed because he felt they were a threat to his throne. His own beloved wife he had killed because he felt she was a threat to his throne. And then he spent the rest of his life lamenting her death. Uh, at least one of his sons he had killed because he was a threat to his throne. And so when the Magi appear and say, oh, where can we find this child that's just been born who's king of the Jews, Herod and all Jerusalem with him were filled with fear at, oh no, what's Herod going to do now? Um, 
because of his this threat to his throne. And in fact, after today's gospel story, we hear of the edict um, he sent out that all the little children two years and under in the region of Bethlehem were to be slaughtered. Um, so definitely a man with deep issues. And so he, if we look at the, the Magi and this whole journey as symbolic for us in our lives, what does Herod represent to you in your life? What are those um, kind of evil forces, those negative forces that threaten you in your life and, and threaten to, to block you from, your, from fulfilling your journey um, that are, you know, obstacles or that knock you off course in the journey of your life. Um, what's interesting is Herod even says to the Magi, oh, search diligently and when you find him, come and let me know right where he is so that I too may come and worship him. So he's pretending to be good and to want to worship the Christ when we know that really he was seeking to kill this Christ, the Christ. So um, St. Ignatius of Loyola talked about in our lives, um, we need to be able to discern good from evil, things that are leading us more deeply into God or toward God and things that are leading us away from God. But St. Ignatius even speaks of evil under the guise of good. That sometimes in our lives, something appears so good, oh, oh, this looks like a wonderful opportunity. But to spend some time in discernment to say, is it really a wonderful opportunity? Or is it um, evil under the, in the disguise of good, as Herod um, was pretending to have a good purpose. And that takes some deep discernment. So can we follow the discernment of the Magi who were wise in terms of what Herod was really about? And we'll get to that. Um, so the fifth point on our journey is um, when the Magi finally got there and they saw the Christ child, these wise, educated, powerful, wealthy people, these spiritual leaders knelt down and worshiped him. Got on their knees, it said, knelt down and worshiped him. And so in this regard, this fifth point is can we follow the example of the Magi in our spiritual lives and ha be humble, humble enough to, to fall to our knees to worship Christ? What, what would it mean for you to be humble? Can you be humble enough to maybe hear some wisdom from unlikely places or from humble People, um, in what ways do you need to kneel down to receive wisdom on your journey? Sixth point, they knelt down to worship him and then they opened their treasure chests and offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Now, in tradition, Gold is a gift that was customary to give a king. We call Christ our king of kings. Frankincense was a gift. It would be customary to give to a priest. We think of Christ as our great high priest, according to the order of Melchizedek, right? And myrrh, we're told, is a, is a spice that was used to anoint people's bodies after they had died. And so this, we're told, is like a foreshadowing uh, of the, the death of Christ and that part of his journey, his purpose, was death on the cross. 
um, that sacrificial element of his life for the sake of the world he so loved. But uh, a woman yesterday at Church Beyond the Walls who studies um, medicinal plants and spices, and she said all three things, gold, frankincense, and myrrh, actually are healing elements and used for healing purposes. And I think that's beautiful. The word healing means wholeness. But for us to look at the model of the Magi and to say, what gifts do we bring um, to the Christ? What gifts has God blessed us with that we, we are to share with Christ for the sake of this world Christ so loves. And the three gifts um, are the reason why in tradition there we often think of there being three magi. But this, again, the same ancient document, the Revelation of the Magi, which has been recently translated by Harvard Divinity student Brett Landau, um, it, in there, it names 20-something um, people who were part of this entourage that traveled um, uh, as, as part of this journey of the Magi. Three wealthy people carrying very expensive gifts would not go on a journey of many, many months across the Arabian desert all by themselves. They'd have a big entourage with some armed warriors, guards to protect them and the gifts they carried, okay? But today, what are your most priceless, precious gifts and are you willing to follow the example of the Magi and offer your gifts to Christ for the sake of the world? And then our final and seventh point. And I love the fact that the story of the Magi ends by saying that they were warned in a dream not to return to Herod. And so they returned home by a different road. They took an alternate path. And so that leaves you and me with what alternate path, what new road, the word in Greek is hodos, road, path, way, what new path might God be inviting you to on your adventure, your spiritual adventure, the faith journey of your life as you follow Christ, our morning star? Christ, the light of the world. What new path are you being called to? May God bless you on your new year and your new epiphany journey. May God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May God look upon you with blessing and grant you peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.